All right, star blueprints. It's a topic that I don't say discuss that much, uh, but it's very good to have a basic understanding as to what they do and why they're useful. For that, we're going to take a look at my tower defense game project. There's a link down below in the description to the itch.io page. It's entirely free to download, but if you do enjoy it, do consider uh, leaving a small donation to support the development of a more in-depth version. Anyway, so what we have here is a folder structure where I have uh, enemies and I've got a basic enemy and a heavy enemy. And in a similar way, I have towers. I have a parent tower and all the other towers I have, fire tower, freeze tower, homing tower, normal tower, poison tower and support towers are all child blueprints of that parent tower. So what does that exactly mean? If we go into the parent tower, you will see a decent amount of nodes here, which uh, drive its behavior. And it's also got an AI controller, which is hooked up into all of this here. So we've got a behavior tree. Again, relatively simple. It's either just attacking or it's rotating towards an enemy. And that's all linked up to this parent tower. So then when you make a child blueprint of this parent tower, which you can just do by right clicking, create child blueprint class and we let's call this uh, example tower you will see it immediately has the same thumbnail image and that is because when we go into this example tower and let's just make this full screen for a moment you will see that it's got everything in it that also exists within this and that's because a child blueprint inherits everything from its parent so if i just put this into the map right now it will behave the exact same way as this parent tower but the but the brilliant thing is that every single variable that exists in the parent tower obviously also exists in this one but can be a different value so it's almost like an instance of the parent tower but on top of that the event graph here is empty so on top of everything that the parent tower does we also have the ability now to make any programming specific to only this tower on top of everything that the parent tower does so the parent tower will have all of the programming to rotate towards enemies shoot enemies keep track of what enemies are in its range which enemies to attack next all that kind of programming is set within the parent tower because all of the other towers will be able to need to do that as well but if we take a look at one of the example towers, for instance, uh, the poison tower here, you will see there's a little bit of extra programming within the poison tower, which has to do with specifically the targeting for the poison tower, because the poison tower targets in a slightly different way from normal towers, because it's always looking for enemies that aren't poisoned. It's using some of the information from the parent tower because the parent tower always keeps track of which enemies are within its range. But then only the poison tower specifically checks for whether or not those enemies are actually poisoned and picks a target based on that. And here we have the support tower, which does something entirely different. It doesn't really look at enemies at all. So it's got some programming to check whether or not those towers within its range instead. So with these child blueprints, you can make the majority of your programming within one object and then build specific versions of that object that are slightly different from each other. Then we have the enemies. This is the basic enemy, which is also the parent to the heavy enemy. And there's not really a lot of difference in the programming here. Again, you can see there's quite a bit of programming here for the enemy, for its movement, for everything to do with status effects and all that kind of stuff. If we then go into the heavy enemy blueprint, you will see there's none of that because, again, it's a child blueprint of the basic enemy. But all of this information over here, all these variables are still available. So what we can do is, for instance, here we have the damage to player HP variable, which is set to 2 in the heavy enemy because it's heavier, it's slower, it's got more HP, but it will also deal more damage to the player once it reaches the end. It's a tower defense game, right? And if we go into the basic enemy, we will see that it's just set to 1. And maybe we can make a enemy which is faster, has less HP, and maybe once it dies, it splits into two even smaller enemies. And you can make like as a bit of a uh, RPG slime mechanic with that, right? Which is honestly one of the ideas that I have for the full version of the tower defense game. 
that extra functionality can then be made within a child blueprint. So we can go create child blueprint. Let's call this uh, slime um, enemy. So now in this event graph, we can add some more programming to when it dies, instead of it just disappearing, it also spawns into other enemies with like half the HP of, of this enemy in total, or something like that, right? In a very similar way, the level is built up out of tiles. And all of these tiles are child blueprints of this original tile. So we've got a tile, which then has a lot of child blueprints, but then this path tile is also the parent to these. So what we have here, we've got the tiles blueprint, which has a child that is the path blueprint, and then that path blueprint has children, which is a path flip-flop left, flip-flop blah, 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 all these other path tiles are also children of this, which means that this inherits all the functionality from this, which inherits all the functionality from this. And we go one step deeper uh, to explain how this is even more useful, because if you cast inside of a blueprint, right? If you cast to uh, tiles, tile path, for instance, if the object reference that you're casting to is a child of tile path, so in this case, if it is a tile path, a, a tile path flip flop left right, a tile path flip flop straight left, a tile or whatever, whatever, right? Any of these tiles it will be a successful cast. That allows you to check one step at a time for increasingly less specific versions of a tile, which I do here. This is my pathfinding system. So I first check for a tile spawner because that is where you spawn. If that returns a true, we do this. If that returns false, we uh, check for specifically a cross path. If that is true, we do this. If that's false, we check for the tile flip flop left right. Again, if that's correct, we do all of this. If that's not correct, we look for any other kind of tile path. Doesn't matter if it's a corner path, if it's a cross path, if it's a whatever path. Well, actually, we, we checked for a cross path before, so you wouldn't have a guess here. It checks for any other type of tile path. Because I've got a lot of tile paths that actually have the same functionality, but just slightly different looks or functionality that for the purposes of this navigation system don't really differ. So this can be any kind of different path that's left over. Then if it's no kind of path at all, then it will check whether or not it's a goal. So in this way, you can check for a lot of different types of blueprints by just doing one cast. And you can, again, in increasing broadness, look for something. You start looking for a cast for a very specific child. Then you look for a cast for the parent of that child. And you can keep doing that as many layers deep as you would like. It can be a quite confusing and painful thing to wrap your head around but once you start really thinking about okay i've got 10 different enemies that all need to have the same behavior but only have different weapons for instance you probably want to make a baron blueprint for the enemies one that you might not even use in the game itself it's literally just the thing that all the other blueprints reference for their base behavior Maybe you've got three different player characters that all play slightly differently. You can make one Baron blueprint and then add the specific extra little bits that you need for each specific player character. Maybe one has a double jump. Maybe one has a air dash. If you're making like a platform or something, right? You can make a base Baron blueprint and then make those other three player characters as children of that. So the basic functionality stays the same. If you need to change something about that, you don't need to go into two, three, four, five, eighty different blueprints and change the exact same thing over and over again because it's all referenced to one and the same place. And all the other child blueprints will automatically be updated as well because they're all referencing back to that parent blueprint for the base behavior. I hope this had a little bit of light on child blueprints. It's a slightly different tutorial than I usually do. We didn't really make anything, we just explained a concept. Do let me know if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see more of, or if you would really rather I just make things and you can follow along with me making this specific thing. 